The Nywin Starkings, the faction that truly likes to hurt themselves. And I think with this faction, some of the abilities are best explained by showing an example. So the galaxy is in a little fun game state here, where some units are already out on the game board, but our starting units is still in our home system. And this is also where I want to begin. So let's start with our starting units. We have a Dreadnought, a Carrier, a Cruiser, three Fighters, one Space Dock, three Infantry, and a Mech. And the Mech is important. But with these starting units, we can easily gain control of up to four planets in two systems, which is just quite fine. But also note here that our home system is a gravity rift, so it is an anomaly, and we have a faction ability that helps us to fly our spaceships safely out of our home system. It's called Celestial Guides. Your units do not roll for gravity rifts. You may ignore the movement effect of anomalies in systems that contain or are adjacent to one or more of your structures. So first of all, we get the benefit from the gravity rift so that our carrier and our dreadnought already have movement too from the beginning of the game and we don't risk losing them on the way out. So we have a lot higher flexibility when it comes to what planets we want to take in round one for instance. But also if we place a structure on an Evera or one of the adjacent planets here, then we can also ignore the bad movement effects from the nebula here. So that is a really, really strong faction ability in my opinion. And besides our starting units, we also got some starting technologies. The first one is plasma scoring. And I think this makes perfectly sense because we want to have units with sustained damage and Dreadnoughts is one of those units. And then we can also use their bombardment abilities and get it a little better with plasma scoring. And then we also have Dark Energy Tap so that we can explore those frontier tokens. And we have a little extra flexibility when it comes to retreating from space combat. And exploring frontier tokens brings me to our second faction ability. It's called the Void Sailors. When you explore frontier token, you may draw one additional card. Choose one to resolve and return the rest to the Frontier Exploration deck. Then shuffle that deck. So this is very similar to Nasraka whenever they explore planets with their mechs. And this is also really a truly powerful faction ability in my opinion. And you may have noticed that we have this small wound token here. And if we take a look at our third faction ability, it's called the Singularity Point. The system that contains the wound token is both a nebula and a gravity rift. So whenever we move out during the first round here, then we want to make sure that we get our mech out as well. Because if we take a look at our mechs, it's called the Void Flare Warden. After this system is activated, you may have this unit become damaged to place or move the wound token into this system. But note here that it says after this system is activated, so unfortunately, we cannot put the wound token into this system in the same tactical action where we actually move the mech out. And as you may have noticed, the mech also got some uh, prerequisites out here. And that's because one of our faction technologies is an upgrade to our mechs. And if we do that, and I think we really should do that, then our combat value increases from hitting on a 6 to hitting on a 4, which is significant. But there is also a slight but very, very important change to the faction ability. Because on the tier 1 it says after this system is activated, you may have this unit become damaged. And on the upgraded one it says after a system is activated, you may have this unit become damaged. So that makes it a lot easier. So let's say that the i6 mine net here activates a system. And then we can choose to let this mech become damaged. And then we can move the wound token into this system instead. And we really want to place this wound token in a strategic system whenever we pop our hero, but I will get back to him a little later in the video. But speaking of damaging ourselves, let's have a look at our other faction technology. It's called the Void Wake Missiles. After one or more of your units with sustained damage make a combat roll, you may choose one of those units to become damaged to re-roll its combat roll. And to be honest, I haven't, I haven't tried playing this faction, but I really think this is a bad technology. I mean, yes, you get to re-roll one combat die, but you have already damaged the unit. So I cannot really see why you shouldn't just go into the next round of combat. Hope that you roll better in the next combat round. Because here you will take a hit and lose a hit point for sure. But you're not even guaranteed to make a hit on your opponent. So I'm not really sure that I will go for this faction technology. And now let's get back to the wound token here. Because as you may remember, it is both a gravity rift and a nebula. And we have units in this system. 
and that means that we get to unlock our commander because it says have units in two different non-home anomalies. And since the wound token has both uh, anomalies, then we can unlock our commander with that. And when we do it, it says when one or more of your damaged units make a combat roll, up to two of those units may roll an additional combat die. So again, this faction really likes to, to hurt themselves. And when they are hurt, then we also get a little stronger. So if I play these guys, I am very tempted to go for the Dreadnought too, so that we are sure that we can use sustained damage on our Dreadnoughts without getting them destroyed by direct hit action cards. Because having a system with two damaged Dreadnoughts in them and we can roll two extra dice will most likely produce quite a few hits against our opponent. And we are also a little bit on the way to get the Dreadnought too, since we start with a blue technology. And then, of course, we want Gravity Drive, and then we could get Sarween Tools or Scanlink Drone Network, and then we have easy access to this one. And now let's move on to the Agent, the Sultan Rack. And I think this one is a little bit complicated, but it says, when a player would use one unit's non-production unit ability in a system that contains or is adjacent to an anomaly, you may exhaust this card to prevent that unit from using that unit ability. And the last unit ability is deployment. So there are six to eight factions that can deploy their mechs. And then we can use the agent to actually prevent that player from deploying mechs. But it could also be the Titans that can deploy their flagship in case they are in or adjacent to an anomaly. But I don't think this is an agent that we will much use ourselves. I think it's pretty much a service that we can sell to other players. For instance, the Argent with their super strong destroyers, then a fighter heavy faction like for instance Nalu could be interesting in buying this service to prevent anti-fighter barrage being rolled against some of their uh, crystal fighters. But of course we could also use it to prevent a player with PDS2 to fire a PDS into a system that we want to fly into. If you don't already own the game, then you can buy it through one of the affiliate links in the video description below. In this way, you will support the channel because I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost for you. So thank you if you do. Then we have our flagship called the Erotica. And the stats down here are pretty normal. So cost 8, roll 2 dice and hits on a 5, got movement 1 and capacity 3. So of course the combat values here is in the better end. But what makes this unit special is when a unit in this system would be destroyed, you may remove it from the game board instead. So what is the difference between being destroyed and removed from the game board? Well, that can be pretty significant because on our right side here, we got Yin with the infamous Van Hauge flagship. And if we take a closer look at that, then it says, when this ship is destroyed, destroy all ships in this system. So let's say that Yin wants to commit suicide with his flagship. So he activates Evera here and flies in only with a flagship. Then normally when this unit becomes destroyed, then all of our other ships would be destroyed as well. But since we have our flagship in here, Yin will just lose their flagship because it's simply just removed from the game board. But we could also prevent the Necrovirus from replicating one of our technologies. So let's say that he destroys one of our dreadnoughts here or normally it would be destroyed, but our flagship changes that so that it's only removed from the game board. And that means that their faction ability doesn't kick in and then they cannot uh, replicate any of our technologies. So if you get to use this unit's ability, I think it is very strong, but it is also very situational. And then before going into the hero, let's just quickly look at the promissory note, the Niven Guidance. After you activate a system, during this activation, you may ignore the effects of each anomaly. Return this card to the Niven player at the end of this activation. And I think this can also be sold for a small price, but it's also very situational. But it could help another player, for instance, to fly into the supernova, and then they could potentially explore this frontier token or make a su surprise attack on the Lysix player here. But again, I think this is very situational and maybe not the easiest one to sell. And then lastly, we have the hero, the Singularity Cradle. It's an action. Each unit on the game board with sustained damage, other than your mechs, becomes damaged if able. Place this card near the game board. You may treat each unit you control as adjacent to the system that contains your wound token until the end of this game round. And of course that can be pretty convenient. So let's say the action after we activate on Simlaw here, and since this system is adjacent to the wound token out here, then it can easily reach Simlaw and we can fly in and hopefully 
win a combat against all of these sustained dreadnoughts. So yes, under the right circumstances, I think the hero can be really strong, but you need to set it up with the wound token and you need to have an opponent with units that got sustained damage for it to be effective. Just note that if the barony of Litnev is in the game, then whenever you pop your hero and they have a lot of dreadnoughts out, then they become a little richer because of their commander. And this is the Niving Star Kings. I think it's a faction with some really strong faction abilities. And then the hero and the promissory note and the agent is somewhat weaker, but I think that moderates a faction so it doesn't become too powerful. Please share your experience with this faction in the comments below. You can support the channel by becoming a Patreon member. Besides that, thank you for watching and I hope I'll see you in the next one.